The Father Bob McGuire Foundation exists to provide practical help to the areas of most need. Awarded the Order of Australia a centenary medal and named Entrepreneur of the Year for a social community of not-for-profit organisation, Father Bob McGuire is a relentless and energetic campaigner and worker who is seeking corporate donations for a very worthy cause. And you look nothing like Father Bob. I'm not Father Bob. I'm Sister Roberta. Of which order? Of the Leaping Sisters of St Beryl. You're not. Um, it, other churches have women priests. This was the opportunity to have a male nun. So I am the only male member of this order and I have taken the name of Sister Roberta. Now you might think that this is a bit of a joke, Mike, but this shows how far you have to go to raise awareness and money. So I, I take this off now because we have to get down to the serious business, do we not? That's fantastic. <laughs> it's Father Bob. Yes. Can you provide an update on the Father Bob Maguire Foundation and its Since activities? Since the last time we met, Michael, which is a year ago, and I said then I needed 30 people at $7,500 to invest that would give me the core funding for 12 months. Well, I didn't get it. But I now know that, in fact, I need to simplify the product's presentation. See what I mean? So I'm not blaming anybody. I'm blaming myself because uh, it was a bit complicated, you see, and I've, pure, I've simplified it to the extent that I'm now talking about I've got 300 dependents, all right? And they depend on me for food, clothing, uh, medical assistance, legal assistance, uh, and even accommodation, and help to keep the young ones going to school. 300 of them. And I'm talking about a virtual village. See, because I'm aware that people might say, show us this place and we can come and visit it. And I'm saying, well, hold on, it's not in one place. It's a virtual village because it's in the western suburb, it's in the central business district, the red light area in St Kilda, and this salubrious suburb of South Melbourne. So how hard is it to raise funds for charity in today's climate? Very, very hard, Michael, because a lot of people in the, uh, in the marketplace looking for funds for their charities. And you will notice that every other day a celebrity pops up and says, Behold, I myself have got a foundation. Now, it's very hard there for little, little uh, players like me. You see, I'm not an organisation, see. I tried to personify and personalise this, hoping the Aussies, right, would say, ah, oh, give us a look at his record, track record. Has he been in prison for fraud? Has he been in prison for... Has he... Has he mm. What's his reputation? So I'm saying I've got 74 years of fairly steady uh, record in working for people and getting nothing out mm. of it for myself. So I don't there... like this business, mm. see, sitting around talking and laughing and all that on the screen, because have a look at me. My face is my fortune, Michael, and that's why I'm broke. <laughs> See what I mean? But there's somebody out there must love you. Oh, well, there's a, well, there's a few people who have kept me going, for God's sake, mm. over all these years. I can't rely on them all the time. It's unfair. So I'm trying to find a new batch of investors. And that's why I try to make this thing as simple as possible mm. because all of you boys and girls out there in the business world are so busy and rightfully so that you haven't got that much time to wade through uh, sheaves of literature about a project. But see, what I'm saying is uh, this is like a social capital investment. I said it 12 months ago and I'm sticking to it. And when you invest... In these projects, I promise you that the return will be beyond your wildest dreams, Michael, because we will divert young people away from a possible or a life of possible chaos into a possible, a probable mm. life of, uh, of uh, meaningful employment. And that's by sending them to school. And thank God for Honda Foundation, which gave us 10,000 quid this year to keep kids mm. at school. And thanks to Parade College Bandura, which did a walkathon, which gives us $10,000 to keep kids at school. Mm. So there's a couple of good punters. 
you provide support to people on an ongoing basis. So do you think many people leave the giving to those already giving? Of course you do. Of course you do. That's, that's the way of the world. You say to yourself, well, uh, look at these names of those uh, 100 richest men and women and they're all down in the column as having been philanthropically involved and they've done this and they've done that and they've done the other, which is terrific. Mm -hmm. But then you see, that's, that's human nature, is to leave it to the big boys. But I'm saying, be that as it may, the big organisations have got their claws into the big boys, mm -hmm. you see. But what does Sister Roberta have that Father Bob Sister McGuire Roberta hasn't? Sister Roberta is a woman. See? So you expect her to speak from her heart. Mm. All right? Father Bob is a bloke. Now, don't get too far into this. Mm. You expect him to speak not from his heart, but from his head. Is that what I mean? Mm. Now, people, uh, people need, need to... This proposition has got to be put from the heart, you see, I believe. The stats everywhere. Well, look, every day they churn out more stats that say we're all going down the gurgler because we're too filthy rich and we, we don't eat the right food and we shouldn't be smoking or drinking. Or, uh, you see what I mean? Now, that's, that's, the, that's the stats from the head. Uh, the poor shouldn't be encouraged because uh, uh, they're not trying. And, oh, the stats. The crimes in... I'm saying let the heart talk. And the heart will say to you things like, there but for the grace of God go I. Mm. You see, it won't let you forget your, your family's uh, past because most of us come up from working class families. See what I mean? As the heart will remind you of that. So Father Bob McGuire Foundation, in fact, needs to speak from the heart and I su su suggest that a woman would be far better at that than I am. And I'm 74 and fat and bald. If somebody wants to give... How do they do that? Well, I suppose they ought to go to my website, which is fatherbob.com.au. I think that's the simplest way, you see. And I try to put on it little, what do you call it, uh, two, three-minute reports, mm. uh, like the real estate agent Century 21 tried to uh, form a strategic alliance. I'll give you half me, mm. what do you call it, a commission on all properties listed June, July. Uh, 2008. Now that was nice. So I put that report on Mike. So the bloke flying from here to Kuwait can say, oh, he's a cunning bugger. He's got himself in with, all right? Mm. See? And then little reports like that. Uh, I think the last little report would, would have dragged people out into the Hopemobile and said, this is what's going on there. I'm nervous because I can't give as many reports as I would want to give because I'm a bit nervous about saying to all the kids who are going to school, which is 15 of them, all get together, we're going to take a team photo now for the nice men and women who are paying your fees. Now, see, if I did that, see, that it would be a seller. I could do it if I was a woman. Mm. See what I mean? Because it would be nicely done. If I'm a bloke, I'd have to blow whistles and start, you know, uh, yelling and all that kind of thing, like a football coach or something. Wouldn't go over. If Father Bob McGuire was to describe Sister Roberta in one word, what would it be? Failure. And if Sister... She only lasts two minutes, for God's sake. And you were <laughs> carrying on there as though we couldn't continue the interview. And if Sister Roberta was to describe Father Bob in a word... Mm. What would it be? Bleeding heart. That's two words. Blart. An old blart. Father Bob, thank you very much. Or Sister Roberta, thank you. Thank you, darling. Will I put the veil on? No?